Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I'm doing a video that a lot of people ask me to do. Michael Stevens, who's a Vsauce, and he did isolation for 72 hours. That means, and he had, it's total sensory deprivation. I mean, zero, nothing, everything. I looked at it already, and I'll be honest, some parts gave me the chills. Just being, being honest about that. But before I get started on the video, please check me out on uh, YouTube member programs, Patreon member programs. If you haven't, check my book out, Gangster Redemption. You'll talk a lot about the whole there, isolation. You'll learn a lot for sure. Why I wanted to do this, people ask me, and I didn't know about this experiment they did. They took a man and he, he volunteered to go into total isolation for 72 hours. Even more extreme than isolation from other people is isolation from other people and stimuli. That's what I'm going to be doing inside this room. Now, what he's saying is that the experts say, you know, if you're totally isolated, you can have mental damage in 72 hours. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe some people, you know, depending on how weak or strong people are, I think that, that makes a big difference. This is a little bit different than prison. When I, when I got this, I, I thought it was gonna be like prison, but it's not. It's actually worse. I will have no way to tell what time it is. No meals will be delivered because all the meals are inside the room already. He had zero stimulation. When I say zero, they didn't even show that he had a toothbrush. They had, he had a bar of soap, he had the, the, the meals, they weren't coming to get it, give him meals. What got me nervous was I'm, I'm claustrophobic now. Uh, and I thought about that. And I, I know how crazy I would go. Maybe have a panic attack. I, I, I never really, I had a panic attack once it, going into a doctor's office. I can't get in an MRI machine. I can't even get in an open MRI machine. It only happened since prison. I was in the Coast Guard, lived in a small birthing area in a little space, used to sleep there in rough weather and make it a little, I mean, a little corner lot, you know, little corner slot. So it, it I totally changed after prison and after doing this. Now, I spent three years in a hole. I will be staying in this room for three days, a full 72 hours. Uh, forgot to ask what time it was when I came in. He didn't ask what time it is when he came in. You know, I don't think that mattered. I mean, obviously, uh, I don't think that's anything, you know, you needed to know. Talking to someone. He already looks really bored and he's been in there five seconds. <laughs> he's bored already at five seconds. Now, how you handle that? See, I'm actually pretty tired. I'm watching him. He says he's pretty tired. He's getting monitored. He knows that. He can talk into a camera. That's a big help. First thing I did when I went into my cell was literally get on my hands and knees, ask the guard for a fucking uh, a, a mop, a ringer, or a, a towel, just a towel, because you'd be so much fucking shit from the last guys in there or whatever it is. And they change you every two or three weeks, depending on what prison. So they would change cells, so every cell I went to. In an extreme situation, people can have massive hallucinations, be dissociated from reality, have tremendous anxiety, psychotic types of episodes. Now, they call it sensory uh, deprivation, where you don't get anything. When I got out of prison, I actually had sensory overload. There was too much information being thrown at me that I freaked out. And that's when I went on the bus crying, when I couldn't even buy a sandwich. And I told that story in one of the videos that uh, the bus driver says, hey, listen, we're gonna stop into the gas station and get some uh, food, you got 40 minutes, get back on the bus. Fucking gas station, 40 minutes, I'm just out of prison. And there was a Subway there, there was a grocery there. I, I don't know if there was a McDonald's, but I always wanted a Subway sandwich because food. And I ended up, I got to the line and I couldn't make the choice. There were just too many choices. And I had what they call sensory overload. My, my system shut down. So that is true, that stuff does happen. Your brain is an amazing instrument, man. So anyway, here he is, he gets in the cell. Again, the light's on, that's normal. I, first things I did, and I'll, I'll show you, clean the cell. Normally when I change into more comfortable clothes and I'm like ready for bed, I uh, lay down and then I pick up my phone or I pick up a book or something, but I don't even, I don't have that. If he succeeds in going to sleep. I know this is gonna sound crazy. One of the best things I did in the hole, and I know this is going to be bad or whatever, I might get some feedback on it, but I masturbated a lot. And it's a way to relieve the excess energy. Your brain starts kicking into incidents you had with a girlfriend or whatever you did. So your brain is working better. And I would do that sometimes two, three, four times a day. And here I am at that time, maybe a 36 year old man, 37 year old man, four, whatever it was, I did it all through prison. And believe it or not, it, 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 one wears you out, your brain is active, 
in a different thing and you can come up with a lot of things you've done in life like that. So that's one thing I did that they don't show. Now he's being watched on camera and I'm sure, you know, I don't know if they even talked about that before this experiment. You can't do that you know, because it's such a stress reliever. I know you young kids know that. It's literally a stress reliever. It's gonna be interesting to see what time he thinks it is when he wakes up. All right. Now you see what he did? Put something over his eyes. We did t-shirts, he had a t-shirt on his thing. I don't know what the temperatures was in there. It probably seems pretty good. Uh, we used to be able to uh, uh, close that up. I was able to sleep and I woke up maybe one or two times in the night. So I think it's probably, you know, 8 a.m. Thursday morning. He's so far off on time, and uh, that's normal. That would even be normal. You're never really on exactly. You know, you kind of get an idea when you're getting out because they'll let you out certain times. Like, they'll let you out at 1 o'clock after chow or 9 o'clock after the morning chow to go to your unit when you're in the hole to go back out. And you're a little, little off on that, especially depending how long you were in the hole. What he doesn't do here is yes, he loses time, and he starts exercising. I guess I should have some breakfast. One, two. Now here he is exercising, and you see all that stuff. Now, what got my attention in this, he's really not an a, uh, a, uh, ingenuity guy. He's not really, he doesn't think outside the box. Now why should he, he's not a prisoner. But did you see all of that stuff the bottles, the water bottles, the toilet paper, the towels, the, the trash bin right there. Now, being smart, he could have took a little bit of a piece of a, uh, of a sheet. You got a full sheet, use your, your, your teeth, make a little strip down and you have strips and you can make pulleys to do things. You could put some of those bottles and you put water in them and you make them heavy and you put them in a, in a little sheet. You know, you could take your sheet or your pillowcase, put the bottles in there, wrap it up, and do curls. So he's not thinking outside the box. Now, that's just come second nature to me, the first thing I did. I built the house in my brain, in the hole. When I say built the house, I literally built the house. I mean, I remember it to this day, I wanted to live on a golf course. I wanted to have a sunken dining room looking out over a glass window over the golf course. I wanted a Benihana table. You guys know what Benihana is. That's a restaurant they serve uh, food. And I wanted one of those kind of tables with the, the grill in the middle. All the people could sit around it. I mean, I figure hey, at times I could hire a chef and, and have a great thing or make breakfast on that thing. I'm a big breakfast eater to this day. I literally in that prison, in a hole, would literally where I wanted the outlets, the extra outlet, why I wanted the kitchen to go up a step so it looks out another window and has down and you could put a bar there so people could sit around and have a drink and have the couch along the window. I had so in depth, it was really a whole house, about a 3,500 square foot house, literally in my brain. Every piece of work in that thing I did. I went from room to room. Six. Now, if he sticks with this routine, he's gonna get in great shape, this guy. Z Obviously, I don't think he did. -U -U He's using his brain good. Even talking out loud, they say, is, is pretty good. Some good ideas for mental stimulation. I wonder if as time goes by, he's going to come up with some more creative ones, or he's going to start to get less creative. Uh, I've done 200 steps now, eight more hundreds to go. He does have a break by talking it to the camera. I mean, he knows people are going to watch it, and he can be cognitive. And I guess that's why... He, you don't want to do anything else. Well, our, our minds want to remain active. They're, they're naturally active. The healthiest people who survive in these types of environments will do something to self-stimulate. Yep, you hear what he said? The guy, the doctor just said that, you know, guys who, who make it in this self-stimulate, and that was me. I would self-stimulate with working out, self-stimulate with the brain, building a house, uh, shooting kites to another person under the door. I self-stimulated, uh, but I still think I went crazy. When I was in 11 months straight, that was the longest, I, I was going crazy. I ended up flooding my cell and fucking fighting and I just just to get attention pretty much. Uh, they had to come in my cell and they four-pointed me, beat me, but they were trying to shut me up, obviously, because I was exposing the deaths in the prison. They'll do physical exercise. 97, 98, 99. 100, 300 steps. Now, what he could have did using this system he's doing, he had no pen, no nothing like that, but he could have took the bottles 
his bottles, all the stuff, or the toilet paper rolls, or the paper, and make, you know, take the, the toilet paper, make a little stick, and then make things to count. You know, we used to make chess boards. In, in each of us had a room, we'd make a chess board, and then make pieces and call over to what, 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 what position it was in. So we did that. And again, self-stimulation. He's not left too much weight there, was he? The mattress. It's amazing how hard it is to tell what time of day it is just based on your body. I think it's about 7 or 7.30 p.m. on Thursday. See how whacked out he is in time? He said it was 7.30 p.m. and it's 11.30 a.m. He's already quite off on his perception. Yeah, he's off on time is what the doctors are saying. It's not even that I want a meal. It's actually that I just want to have a meal with people. I just want to talk to some people. Now, he's say, saying he wants a meal. You know, he don't care about the meal. He can live off that. Listen to me, man. This fat fuck, I love food. I did get down to very, uh, my lowest weight ever was in prison, and it was 189 pounds. As a big guy, that's pretty, look. I look like a crackhead, someone said, when I got out. They really did. Although I was in great shape, I just, it, I don't, my body is different. People don't recognize me like that, and I get it. Uh, probably healthier and everything else, but that was just me. Because sometimes you have a celly in the hole, and it does help. But then again, sometimes you don't want him. He, 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 he snores, he smells, he's a fucking piece of shit. You end up fighting or whatever it is. When I was in the hole, a lot of times it was isolation because I was a little bit wild. I ended up having a routine that I got into that made me focus. And I had to focus. My brain is a very creative brain. And sitting there thinking about your life, your, your, your ex-wife, your wife, whoever it is, whoever you're dealing with and your family, and then you get letters. I always got mail, too. I was lucky, my family knew when I was in the hole because they only give you a pencil, a little, like, a little golf course pencil. You know, those little shits. And you have a piece of paper and you write a letter in pencil. My family always knew when I was in the hole because I was in pencil. The letter was in pencil, oh, he's in the hole, what did he do, that kind of shit. And they'd visit, and sometimes you can get visit, depending on what you did. Usually, before you go to the DHO, which is the disciplinary hearing officer, you can still have visits because you're not convicted yet. But once usually they'll take your visits, they'll do that, now you can't have a visit. Can't have a phone, can't have a visit, can't have anything. But when you had visits, that helped too. You get ready for the visit, you know. It was amazing because, again, some places had a book cart. I used to, used to some places even gave you the paper, the newspaper. So I used to get the newspaper delivered for my whole time in prison, the USA Today paper. And I'd get it every prison I went to. Now, it used to come a day or two late. And I had a lineup of people who wanted that paper. Lord, can you give it to me next? Nah, this guy's got it first. This one's got it, you know, whatever I had to do. Oh, come on, Lord, give it to me. And I said, nah, it's got a rotation. You ask him, and that's it. And people would read the paper three, four, five days later. It's still great, because it's still news to you. You know, you're in, especially in the hole. I mean, you didn't even have a transistor radio. But I'm guessing it's, uh, you know, 8 p.m., maybe 9 p.m. on Friday. A good time to... They keep going back to time because he really don't know what time it is. And that is doesn't even bother me. But he's not doing much. They're not showing him really taxing his body. You could tax your body and it would be a lot better off, guys. A lot better off. A lot of similarities to do. There's things you can do that he didn't know to do that can make you be better equipped to handle something like this. Because you do go fucking crazy. Now, here is zero. Like in some holes, we would have a book cart come around. If nothing else, they always gave you a Bible or a Koran or a Torah or a Buddhist book. They'd, they'd give you one religious book, and I've read the Bible cover to cover as a book five times, literally. I've spent a lot of time being entertained by my memories. See, memories, you know, I tell everybody, material things are just that, material. You'll lose them, you'll gain them, you'll get more, you'll get less. You can't take my shit that's out of my head. Can't do that. They took everything, the government. Can't take this. Good and bad. Can't take this. A fear I have right now is that it's just Friday. And that there's still a lot of time left. There were other times during this that I was definitely... You see, he's going hurt. a little crazy looking at the walls and stuff. Again, he could have ripped up his mattress. He could have did certain things that would have uh, literally make things to do all day. You know, make a rope, do uh, make workout equipment, chess, but whatever, just to yourself. And it would keep you really busy. I counted cinder blocks. I'd know the distance and I would uh, do certain things. You could also... 
obviously the best thing you do is running in place obviously doing tyson squats think we call them tyson squats there with no weight but man you will get your ass fucking great shape push-ups best exercise in the world they used to do pull-ups off the bed because we had bunk beds so i'd do these you know get get you know get muscles working if we didn't have a shower in the cell some some of these places have a shower in the cell Obviously, this doesn't. So you will start. I don't care. He's got the soap, but I'm sure he's taking a bird bath. But you're going to smell. You know, you're going to smell. And first of all, depending where it is, I would take my clothes off and use the clothes for different things. Again, uh, for making workout equipment and stuff like that. Always did that. Now I'm upset. He thought he was getting out, and now he's upset. But isolation, and I say this on this channel all the time, is the worst thing we can do to human beings. It's the worst thing we can do to human beings. We are social animals. I know I am. I enjoy talking. I enjoy answering comments. I do all that kind of stuff because I like what I do. Uh, and I enjoy people. I enjoy the interactions. That's why I found out about this video on the comments. People asked me to, hey, Larry, have you seen this Vsauce isolation? It'd be great if you got your views on this. And I actually look at all these things and if enough people ask, I eventually do it. You all know that. I can't believe the color of the light isn't changing. Yeah, you start going crazy with that light. And you know, another thing you do, come out of the hole. Pale. I mean, when you are not, and you can't walk, even though you worked out in a hole, try to walk the track. You'd walk one lap and be be burnt out, man, because you're using different muscles that you can't use in the hole. It was crazy, and you would literally be pasty white. It was terrible. I used to tell my black friends, man, you're white now. They'd laugh. 15, 7, 6. But he's trying to count and work out, and whether you missed the count up, we never cared. We'd start over. The soap is really unique. It's not a kind of soap I've ever used before, and I... See, he's talking about the soap now, and he's he's doing things. Now, if you started thinking what you could do with that soap, shave it down, maybe get the things, uh, make drawings on the walls, do some... I've seen people go crazy in the hole and actually write demonic shit with feces, with the shit out of their ass, and put it on the walls, and it smelled the whole tear up. It was disgusting, man. Now, he, you know, his mom gets to look at that. And my mom, the only thing my mom used to say with me is, why did you get so much time and a child molest to get less time? She used to get mad at that. That's it. She knew I deserved prison, never liked what I did, but that, that was her only thing. Now, the mom is getting emotional, which I could see that. I mean, your kids. God, I guess I just dreamt it. But Michael Stevens, I give him a lot of credit. I really do. I give this guy a lot of credit to do this experiment. I'm going to do something. I don't know what. But I give this guy a lot of credit. Vsauce, good for you. And you know, you helped a lot of people. This, this is a really good uh, thing to show people. I am so confused. And again, he's not expelling any energy. I haven't seen in the last... Whatever hours they're not showing it. Exercise would burn him out. He would be hurting all over. Trust me, that's a big, big help. I mean, I, you can take his glasses and do shit with. Oh, he's getting out now. That fucking shocked him. And that's true. You get in there so long, thing, things are, are weird. Your pulse is also awesome. Now they did his cognitive test. I don't think they were that bad. I don't think his cognitive tests were that bad. His blood pressure was pretty much normal. Uh, obviously, when you get up and you go out somewhere and you're excited to get out, your your pulse will be a little higher. 83 is nothing. That's actually good. 65 is great. Blood pressure wasn't bad. A little high, but that's again anticipation coming out and stuff like that. I would have came out with my sheets, probably some shit I made. Worked out shit. I think I would have handled it better than him. I really do. But thank you, Michael Stevens. I really mean that. Thank you. Because I think you open people's eyes with this video. Uh, I talk about it all the time on my channel. How the whole is so wrong. And they're finding out more and more how it really fucks with people. But as I tell people, don't go to prison. Make good choices. Anyway, I hope you liked my uh, uh, review of this and what Michael did. And thank you again, Michael. I want you guys to just make good choices. Uh, you have any questions, comments, you know where to do it. Please like, please uh, put it in your playlist, and pass it on to your friends. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. Have a great day, everybody. I hope you never have to experience this kind of stuff. Take care. Have a great day.